Hey gang, it's Tony at CLPO, and boy, I miss you guys. It's been several months since I've posted any tutorials on the channels here, and I just want to say thank you, everyone, for all the, the wonderful comments and feedback and questions uh, in my absence. It's been great to keep the channel and the community going, and I really appreciate it. I'll be back soon with more tutorials, but in the meantime, I just wanted to throw up another quick tutorial because you guys know me. I like to solve things with as few paid plugins as possible. And today I had this need to create some fog. And sure, there are expensive plugins out there like Turbulence FD, there's X Particles, there's fluid simulations and all that stuff. But sometimes you're just in a hurry and you just don't have the time to learn that stuff or you don't have the money to pay for those plugins. And in this case, I just needed a quick little fog uh, roll in for a composite. So technically, I'm using a 3D program to cheat a 2D effect. So we're using 3D to do a 2D plate that we can then use in like After Effects or Nuke or something to composite uh, some fog. So it's not technically a real 3D scene here. Uh, however, you could probably project this onto different geometry and sprinkle it throughout a track 3D scene and, and have some decent results. But this, this tutorial is just for a nice quick demonstration to just show using built-in texture and noise shaders in Cinema, how you can create a similar effect. So let's get into it. So for starters, what I want to do is I want to create an object to project this texture on it. And we're working in high def format. So I'm just going to make an object that's 1920 by 1080. And we don't need any segments in there. I do want to have it facing up and down and orienting away from the camera. So what we can do is come over to our front view and I can dolly out and just fill our frame just so there's no edges of that geometry going outside of the frame. And I'm going to create a camera and then look through that camera. And now we have an object that's perfectly perpendicular to our viewing plane. Next, I want to create a new texture. I can double click down here in the material editor, double click the material to open it up. And I don't want color and I don't want reflectance. I'm in R16, by the way. It doesn't matter though, because what we're going to do is in the luminance channel. And I'm going to stack several textures on top of each other. So before I even start, I just want to start with a layer shader. And then I can go into the layer shader and add my first noise shader. So if I click this little icon, I can go within the settings for the noise. And right off the bat, I'm going to change it from the default noise to a blistered turbulence. And what I want to do is change the scale of this. This is really small. So I'm going to bump this global scale here up to a thousand. And you can see over here, let me change this from a sphere to a plane as well, and I'll make these larger. Now what we want to do, we want to animate the blistered turbulence in here. And you can do that here by changing the animation speed from zero. We're going to do something slow, like 0.2. Now I changed the animation value here, but you don't see it animating. But what you can do is right click and hit animate. And now you can see it's previewing and then once it caches, it starts playing back at more an optimal speed. And again, I want to also animate this window over here. Now this is showing the current shader that we're working on. And this is showing the finished product. If you had bump channels and reflection and transparency, it would show everything combined over here, composited. And this is just showing the single value of the shader that we're working in here. So. In addition to this blister turbulence uh, animating within itself, I also want it to animate across the surface of the geometry that we apply it to. And you do that here in the movement. This is X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to tell it to move. I want it to move left to right. So if I put in a one, it's gonna move right to left. So I wanna put in a minus one. But you see, it's still not moving until I add some speed. So here, if I just put a 1%, now you can see it's moving. And again, if I make this just a positive one, 
it goes the opposite direction. I want mine to go left to right. Minus one. One percent is too fast. I want to make this kind of slow. I want to make this point two. Now, this could work for a really quick fog if you wanted it to, but for me, it's a little too computery and digital looking. I also want to take the value of the pure white down to 60. So this is going to be made up of black to gray. The second thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to back out of this and I want to create another shader, another noise shader, just like the one we were doing. This time I'm going to change it to a wavy turbulence. And instead of going up to a thousand, this time I'm just going to go up to 500 on the scale for this one. Now the other thing I want to do, I want to increase the contrast between these two, but first I'm going to take that white down to 60 in here as well. But I want to show some contrast in here. And you could do that with this low clip. So I'm going to slide this up to about 30. And now you can see I've got some holes that are popping through now. And this is what I want. And again, I want to animate this. So the same, I'm going to keep it slow. I want to go point to in the animation. And again, if I right click, animate, you can see it's previewing, it's caching in here. But you can see that this texture has kind of got a little turbulence happening in it. Now this one, I want to animate left to right again, so I want to go minus one like before. But this time, I want this speed to be a lot slower. I'm going to make this one 0.05. The other one was 0.2. I'm going to make this 0.05. And that's just going to make it creep really slowly left to right. Now the reason we're doing this, when we bring the two together, we're currently, one is overlapping the other. So here's the one on the bottom turn the one on the top, and it's masking it out completely. But if I bring the opacity down to about half, now the two are blending together, but I want to go even further. I'm going to change this from normal to overlay. And it's much like how Photoshop blending modes work, that 50% does nothing, white blows it out, and black makes it darker. So we're just taking that black and gray, and we're overlaying it. So it's just putting the darks in there. Now what we've got is we've got two speeds. We've got a texture moving quicker in the foreground, a larger 1000% scale noise that's moving left to right closer to camera so it's moving faster. And then we have the 500% scaled noise that's moving a little bit slower in the back. So we're basically faking parallax, which means things closer to you move faster and things further away move slower, like a mountain way in the distance versus a telephone pole right near you if you're driving in a car. So we're faking that with the speed and the scale of these two combined. So this is off to a pretty good start, but we can make it feel a little bit more realistic because fog is heavy. So you'd have more fog at the bottom than you would here up at the top. So we're going to achieve that by masking some of this top fog out. And what I want to do that with, I'm going to duplicate the noise at the bottom. Whoops, I clicked it. Grab command and the icon, not the name but the icon. And if I drag it up, notice the cursor turned to a little plus mark there. I'm going to drag it to above. Now we have a copy, an original copy of that first one we did. Now I want to go into it. I want to change the white back to pure white. And I want to change the pattern without changing any of the animation stuff, but I don't want it to be an exact copy. So all I have to do is come in here and change the seed. Now you can see it's still animating, but I've got a different pattern with all the same scale, animation, speed settings, and everything. So now what I can do is come back out, and I want to change this from normal to multiply. So the white is going to go away, but the black, let me animate this one as well, the black is going to start masking out the texture underneath. But I don't want to do it to the entire thing. I just want it to be darker toward the top. So what I want to do is create a gradient. And I want to put it in the V direction. And I'm going to use this as a layer mask. So anything white is going to let that black cloud show through. And anything black is going to mask it out, leaving the fog heavier at the bottom. But a straight gradation is a little boring. So I'm going to bump up some turbulence in here to about 15%. 
And now you can see it's adding some noise of its own in our gradation. But look what's happening on the edges here. It's doing this weird thing where the turbulence is bringing the edge up and it doesn't know what to do. So if you click this absolute checkbox here, it fills in all those little holes that were happening. Now what we also want to do, we could change the octaves up to like 10, I think is the max here. And that's going to add a little bit more detail in here. And if you see, if I change this to one, there's hardly any detail going on in here. But if I turn it up to 10, it's cloudy and it looks uh, a little more organic and cool. If I change the frequency to 0.2, this is actually going to kind of bubble a little bit in here and this is going to animate. Let me bring that frequency up to more like 0.5 maybe. And now you can see, let me animate this. Now you can see that our mask is now animating as well. But I want most of the black of that upper cloud to mask out the fog underneath. So I want to slide the knot in our gradation here from the middle to about here. So a lot of this mask is now going to uh, let that darker cloud above reveal it. And I'll show you that right now. So if we now change this gradient from normal to layer mask, it does nothing above here. But if I slide it under that multiply, it now becomes a layer mask. So watch if I turn it off, that multiplies happening to the whole thing. But if I turn it on, the multiply is only happening here and it's letting some of the fog stay heavier down here at the bottom. So I'm going to do the same. I want to duplicate that gradient mask because I'm going to use it again. So holding command and dragging the gradient up, setting it back to a layer mask and then coming in here and just changing the seed so it's not the same. Then on our second noise, I'm going to copy that one, command, drag it. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to change the seed of this one too. Get something with some darkness toward the top, maybe like that. And I'm going to change the white back to pure white. And now this to multiply as well. And now we've got a combination of let me just start from the bottom so we can kind of show you everything that we did to build this thing up. So we've got our first noise that's animated at a faster speed and a larger scale going left to right. We have our second noise overlaying on top at 50%. So it's letting some of that bottom show through and it's blended with overlay mode. And it's going a little bit slower so it feels like it's off in the distance. We've duplicated our bottom noise but we change the seed so it looks like a different pattern. We set it to multiply so it's darkening the top because we put a gradation that's letting most of the multiply show here but eliminating it from the bottom. And we did the same again. We duplicated the second noise and again we offset both of those with a random seed so they're not the exact patterns and we use gradient masks. And what that hopefully results in is heavier fog at the bottom with less fog, more transparency here up at the top. Now when all of that is done, let's close our material editor and take that material and apply it to this shape. But you see if I hit render, now all the scale is kind of weird and wonky. So with our plane selected, our material selected, if I right click and I hit fit to object and then I hit render, now you can see it feels very stretched. And that's because it's not being projected on a square, it's being projected on a rectangle. So let's go back into our material editor real quick. Let's go back into our layers. And just real quick, let's go into change the scale. This is relative scale, different than the global scale. And we've got our X, Y, and Z, and I just want to squeeze it on the X. So I'm going to make it 75% on the X. I'm going to do that for every instance. I probably should have done this up front, but I forgot. And now you get to see me change it. So we'll just make all instances of our noise 75 in the X direction. And now when we go back to render, 
you can see it's not as stretched there anymore. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Now we just can go into our render settings and tell it to render all frames. And I've just got it set to 960 by 540 right now. And just render. I don't even need to set a name here. And there you go. That's it. There's a quick tutorial on creating some fake 2.5D smoke or fog or whatever you need to use it for. And you can see as we animate, we've got some parallax shift. We've got some faster smoke in the foreground, lighter smoke in the back. And hopefully it's heavier down here than it is at the top. And again, you can keep tweaking those seed settings in there until you, maybe you get a noise that has a heavier black spot up at the top than it has at the bottom. So anyway, that's a quick tutorial for you guys. I'll be back with uh, more extensive tutorials in the future, but for now I still have a feature film I need to finish. But I didn't want to lose your attention because I know it's been a long enough wait as it is. So thank you guys for sticking with me, and thanks for watching another tutorial, and we'll see you all really soon. Bye, everybody.